Here we are at another Monday. It's a beautiful day outside. Hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. And today I have Kaylee joining me for a <laughs> exciting video. And we also have James in the corner here. So if you hear some noises, uh, he wanted to participate while well, he took his mouth instead. So today's video, we're going to talk about where we can save some money as, as investors. Some interesting ideas on what we can do to uh, you know, say, keep a little bit of that coin in our pocket rather than having to spend it out needlessly, especially during mm -hmm. times like this where there's a shift in the market. So you want to run through the five points quick? Sure. Um, so this is actually something that Alex and I would definitely advocate you guys do anyway. However, since we're for the most part home, uh, we're isolated, this is a great time to be looking into our portfolios and uh, really seeing where it is that we can save some money. So uh, first and foremost, understanding where your expenses are at um, seems fairly straightforward, but you would be surprised how many hidden costs there can be. A lot of times you don't really know, you know, what certain services are costing you. So if you want to do just a really quick, you know, P&L, see where things are coming in and how things are coming out. That's uh, it's going to be definitely a great hey, keep, point. keep it simple. I mean, you guys all get monthly bank statements where all your uh, things are, you know, your expenses are coming in, your income's coming, sorry, your income's coming in, expenses are going out. You guys all see where the numbers are at. So maybe take two, three, four months and start to categorize where some of these reoccurring type payments are, which is actually going to be brought up in the next step. So we're not going to go there, but it's all very imperative to know where, where are your costs? What are you spending money on right now? And once you get a full picture, you can really start to paint a picture of what opportunities exist for you so that you can start to uh, keep some money in that pocket of yours, right? Yeah. And honestly, it's a good thing to have for your records regardless, right? If you've never done it before, um, you know, everything for the most part, we have a pretty big Google Drive, which we keep everything in, but we have hard copies too in a binder. So um, there's some really great systems out there that other investors use, but your first starting point should just be getting an idea of, of where things go, right? Income comes in and then where does it go, right? Absolutely. Uh, and then that leads into our second point. So um, all businesses do this. You should always lead with revenue. Uh, real estate is no different. So do a little bit of red light, green light. And again, see where it is that you're spending money. So Alex, do you want to explain a little bit about what that is? Yeah, so red light, green light is... Uh, it was actually first brought to us from Kelly Williams uh, and part of their uh, book, The Shift. It's really impactful actually for any businesses really in this market and how you should be treating a shift like the one that we're going to be going through. So Red Light, Green Light talks about the expenses that you're going to be incurring on a monthly basis and do we stop with those expenses or do we go forward with those expenses despite the fact that we're in a shift. Mm -hmm. So when they're referring to red light, green light, we still have to generate leads, we still have to generate business, we still have to do all that, but we gotta know, are we gonna move forward with this, or are we gonna stop with this, or whatever the case may be, and we're gonna make strategic decisions that way, right? So that's effectively red light, green light in a nutshell. Three, look at your reoccurring costs. So reoccurring costs, very, very important. Thank you, Kaylee. She's going to go make sure the little guy's okay. Mm -hmm. He dropped his bottle. Um, reoccurring costs. You would be so surprised that throughout the year, what kind of costs you can start to accumulate. Um, for example, what are some reoccurring costs? You have your internet, you have your cell phone bill, you have all these different expenses. I know for myself, sometimes I walk away with a cell phone bill in a month that's like 180 bucks. And I look at Kaylee's cell phone bill and it's like half that. And I go, what the heck is going on here? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, we talk about the same amount on the telephone and we don't do anything crazy anyway. So where do those discrepancies lie? Because those discrepancies throughout the end of the year can seriously add up. Or right? gym memberships. Yes. <laughs> you forgot yes. to Yes, gym memberships <laughs> and the COVID-19 that I'm still paying for. Exactly. Uh, a really good, actually, a piece of advice that I got on this was that a lot of our subscriptions, so uh, any sort of service that you have that's from the States, give them a call. Uh, I know obviously the value of Canadian dollar to American has dropped and see if you can renegotiate a, a little bit of a rate discount or if they'll just honor what you were paying ahead of time too. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, number four, utility bills on your properties and maintenance contracts. 
something to really look into. So we own a number of different properties and now as we're turning these properties over, we are focusing on energy efficient things. LED type pot lights, LED light bulbs, um, in terms of you know adding insulation in the attic, depending on what the circumstances are, maybe we replace the windows that we had put off. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you're saving money if you got it in the backlog as part of your maintenance. Not that we can really do a whole lot of maintenance right now anyway with the shutdown, but these are things to think about, right? Because we can't do it now, we might as well do it later. And if it's something we've allocated in the budget anyway, we might as well move forward with it, right? Same with, um, so maintenance contracts, if you have anything that's existing. So right now, given that it's off season, <laughs> the realities of working from home. Um, because it's off season, this is a really great time to see if you can renegotiate your snow removal contract on your properties for next year. Maybe you can reach out and get a quote from a company that will do both snow removal and lawn maintenance, right? That's going to make things cheaper this year. So uh, do that. Or if you have several properties that you've owned, maybe you started acquiring them at different times, reach out to your property managers and see if maybe they can cut you a bit of a, a discount if you move your entire portfolio to one management company. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to save money there and it's going to be less logistic, logistically a headache, right? You're going to be communicating with less people. Excellent point, Kaylee. Excellent point. <laughs> but, uh, last but not least, be creative. Like, uh, it's part of the joys I find in investing is that it's one of the very few industries where we can truly be creative with whatever we want to do there. There are properties, and yes, we have people living in there, but what we can do to save us a little bit of money at the end of the day is... There's a ton of options out there in terms of construction process, how we're going to be doing things in terms of property layouts. But at a time like this, where there's a shift in the market, maybe we can look into some of those rebates that we've been putting off from like Energy Guy, those kind of places. Right? We just did one on Wentworth. We got back with $4,500. Now, we don't have to check yet, but it's in the mail. $4,500. bucks. Literally, it, the, yeah. that's like free money that we didn't really expect last projects also look at grants from the city the city right now has a ton of incentive type programs where they will actually help fund projects so look into the logistics of this and see if they make sense for you because they could be a great way to save a little bit of money but thinking about it in a different way right yeah um so also debt consolidation uh, so if you have, you know, again, this is maybe more from a personal standpoint, uh, but right, right now, especially for lines of credit, everything is reduced. So if there's an opportunity that you can move, um, you know, like really high interest debt, pay it off with something much lower, like a line of credit, uh, consolidate in that sense. Um, that's a very good way to save money, especially on a monthly basis. Totally. You'd be so surprised what a lot of people pay as interest payments every single month. Yeah. Or wild. they're just making the minimum yeah. payments. It's not really getting them anywhere. Uh, you can really affect your credit score in a positive way if you do this right. right? Yeah. I um, agree. One last one that I thought of that we didn't think. Evaluate your properties and see if how you're currently using them is the highest and best use. Ooh. There's so many different ways. Maybe you bought a property um, as a single family, maybe with a little bit of a, a capital investment. It might be better as a duplex or you know, Airbnb. Uh, you know, the sky's really the limit. But look and see if there's other options that might be yielding you a better return or costing you less. See, listen exactly. to that cheer right there. These are some <laughs> great ideas that all of us can implement. And at the end of it all, it's time to take control over all these things because little things add up to big things, right? So a time like this, please take note of your expenses. Do the, you know, do the best that you can to try and minimize unnecessary payments and, uh, and keep investing. So happy Canadian real estate investing. And we'll see you guys on the next video. See you guys.